Hello, so in this episode, I'm gonna talk you through a technique, a process if you like, which will help you get real clarity on what it is that you truly want. Because it can be very difficult sometimes to really get a picture of what's good for us, to really get a picture of what we want, and also be able to identify the things that we don't want, that don't serve us, and that don't meet our needs. So in this particular exercise, in this episode, I'm going to talk you through how to do things like, I don't know, if you wanted to change your living environment and you were thinking, yeah, but how do I actually get the home and the living conditions that really work for me? Or maybe you're thinking about a new career or a new job or setting up a new business or whatever. And you're thinking, well, if I were to be in that new job, what kind of things should I be looking for? that I know won't result in me wanting to leave, you know, 18 months down the line, but where I'm actually going to be genuinely happy. Or it might be the, and this is the example I'm going to use to talk you through the process, it might be that you just keep on picking the wrong partner, you know, someone who doesn't serve you, someone who doesn't, you know, meet your needs, make you feel good or whatever. And you're thinking, well, how do I actually spot this person going forward? How do I actually know who is the person for me and who is the person who I might well be attracted to initially, but actually I can spot that they're not going to meet my needs. They're not going to result in a happy, nourishing relationship. And so whenever you're asking yourself one of those questions like, what is this thing that is really going to work for me and how to avoid this thing that's not going to work for me, whether it's a job or a home or a partner or really anything else that you can think of. I want to show you this profiling technique that will help you to get some clarity on it. Now, obviously, it's not the only way to approach this, but I found it helpful myself. And I know that um, some of the people I've worked with have found this a helpful um, tool for clarity, if you like. So as I say, I'm going to use the example of a partner. So it's it's a quite a common thing that we'll find ourselves, you know, picking the wrong partner for us. Not that they're necessarily, you know, bad people per se. They might not be. Um, but it might just be that, you know, they're just not a good fit for us. And so what I'm going to do is just talk you through that process. And it's a really simple one. All you need to do is get a sheet of paper and draw a line down the middle so you've got two columns and in the left column call it like and in the right column call it dislike now all you need to do is to use your experience of having been with partners already and just go through each of your past partners and ask yourself these two questions what is it i liked about the person that I would like to be experiencing again in a future relationship? And what was it that I disliked about this person that I never want to experience again, that didn't work for me? And those two questions are really powerful because rather than just kind of saying, well, that person wasn't good for me, or you can actually kind of tease out their good and bad points. So you might say, well, that person was successful and had something about them, you know, in terms of their dynamism or whatever, or they were intellectually stimulating or whatever you might come up with, or they look very attractive or I like the way they dressed or however it is that you, you kind of think about that person, the, the things that drew you to them and that you liked about them. But you also allow you then to look in the dislike column and say, but you know, they never spent a lot of time with me. Um, it was hard to emotionally connect with them. Um, I didn't particularly trust them uh, in terms of how they, they were dealing with, you know, were they being faithful or, you know, so you can kind of tease out from that partner the things that you would like to have again and the things that you really don't want to have again. And you can do that for each and every partner that you've been with. And even just by the end of that process, what happens is that you will you will have a you'll have two very interesting lists which really make it clear what it is that you want and what it is that you don't want. Now, if you wanted to take an extra step, 
Or maybe you haven't had a partner yet and you're thinking, <clears throat> you know, how do I actually um, find out what it is that I want? Well, to take that extra step, what you can do is you can look around at people that you've encountered in the world. You can look around at other people's partners, you know, and you can check in on your own envy as well. Do you know, if you know someone and they've got a really great partner and you think, oh, they've done well there, they've got a really great partner, I'd love a partner like that myself, then you can do the same profile on them. What is it that you like about that person? And by the same token, if you, if you know someone who's got a partner and you think, oh, I'm glad I'm not with them, you can do the same thing. What don't you like about, about what are the things that you're spotting that you wouldn't want for yourself in that person? And you can do it with friends as well. You know, there'll be friends in your life um, and they don't have to be, they don't have to be of um, the gender that you go for. They don't have to be the kind of person that you go for, you know. They might just be a friend. It might be a female friend, a male friend, uh, a trans friend or whatever. You know, you, you just notice that you actually like that person in your life. You know, you like them being part of your life. And even though it's not a romantic thing, you can also look at their qualities as well. You know, what is it you like about them? Why do you like having that person in your life? Would you like that in a partner? And then in the same way, you can add to your likes and dislikes. And you can do it with people who you've encountered who, you know, have done the opposite. And you can think, well, I, I don't have that person in my world because I didn't like this about them. And by the end of this whole process, you'll have a like list and a dislike list. Now, the interesting thing is that <clears throat> your like list and your dislike list are kind of, they're almost like the same thing in some ways, because in order to make your like list bigger, you can work through your dislike list and choose the opposite, basically. So if you choose the opposite, so let's say you, let's say you look in your dislike list and it says this person, they just never spent any time with me then the thing that you'd want in your positive list was you're looking for a partner who will spend time with you. If you look and it says they were never really, it was never really possible to connect with them emotionally, then you might say, right, I want a person who I can connect with emotionally. So that dislike list is a really good clue of what you want. You know, um, the, person never, the person never laughed very often. Then in your like list, you can add, I want someone with a ready laugh. And so by using the dislike tool to get what you want, you really start to get a full picture of what the right person is for you, partly from the things that you've liked in others in the past, but partly in terms of allowing the things that you didn't like to shape what you want going forward. So by the end of this, you'll have a dislike list and you'll have a very long like list as well. And through that profiling technique, that will give you a great deal of clarity in terms of the characteristics and attributes that are really going to serve you well. And I've used partner as an example here because, you know, it's a good one. You know, it's a very common one. But you can do this with homes. You know, what kind of home do I want to live in? You can do the same. You can look at the house that you're, that you're in now or the home that you're in now and profile that the same way. You can look at past homes. You can look at homes that you've um, been in in the past that you've liked or disliked, you know, or friends or people that you've visited or whatever. So this profiling technique can be used on a whole host of things. And it's really simple. And there's no right answer that fits all. It's just a way of exploring what it is that you like, exploring what it is that hasn't served you, and then using that to build up a really faithful picture of what it is that you want in the future. So I hope that's helpful. Thanks for listening. If you uh, would like to work with me, I'm Alan Parry. You can find me at liverpoolpsychotherapy.co.uk and uh, you can see me in person or you can see me online as well if you're not local. And if you want to read my blogs, just go to alanparry.com. Alan, by the way, is spelled with a U, the Welsh way, A L U N parry.com. So thanks for listening and I'll see you on the next episode.